So you know that the Democrat, the DCCC, they're afraid of progressives and they're trying every which way to screw them. And uh, which is why progressives shouldn't be in the Democratic Party. They should start their own party because they're half the Democratic Party and fuck them. But that's not happening right now because their leader is telling them to join the Democratic Party, their leader being Bernie. And so they keep being cheated. We just dropped two videos the other day of how the Democratic Party is cheating progressives right here in California, the bluest of blue states. Right. And so now they have this new rule that if you're going to uh, primary, if you are a progressive and you want to primary and incumbent Democrat who's a corporatist, uh, they passed this rule that said if you are a, a political consultant, you cannot work for that progressive who's primarying somebody in the Democratic primary, or we're, we won't hire you ever again. You will be persona non grata. You'll never be hired by another Democrat. And so that's them trying to cheat progressives, right? And so right now, the college Democrats at over 40 schools have boycotted the DCCC over this pro-incumbent policy. So what? Re, so just realize what the DCCC is doing by with this policy. They're trying to make sure that the people who are the problem, because they have a Democrat like Joe Manchin, Joe Manchin, who is more of a Republican than most Republicans, that if you wanted to primary him, they would then punish every political operative who worked for you so they could never get a job again. So that means you can't run your campaign because you need people who know how to run campaigns to run your campaigns. There's a lot to running a campaign. There's mailing lists and, and how to how to get a ra- how to how to run a rally, how to set up a schedule, how to get press, how to there's a million things just to return mailers. There's a million things. Organize volunteers, door knocking. There's a million things that professional campaigns have to do. A blame it's, strategy when you lose. A blame <laughs> Lots strategy. Of stuff. Yep. So, <laughs> so now the Demo- the D Triple How to cheat in your own primary? Yeah. How to uh, give questions to someone ahead of a debate if you yeah. work at CNN? I mean, there's just a lot of things. There's a lot anyway, of things. Sorry. So, what the D Triple C? That's the Democratic uh, Congressional Campaign Committee. And so, again, what they've made it so now it's almost impossible for a progressive to primary a corporatist because of this. So, what, what Ocasio Cortez did? That's the kind of thing they're trying to stop. Young Democrats at more than 30 colleges nationwide plan to boycott the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, the DCCC, in protest of a new policy, critics say, is intended to freeze out challengers to the incumbent representatives. The Harvard College Democrats are leading the coalition. Now, that's important because all these Harvard College Democrats, they're children of the establishment. Right. So that and they're they are soon going to be the establishment. So the Harvard College Democrats are leading the coalition, which initially featured 26 chapters nationwide, but which Harvard Democrats President Hank Sparks confirmed to the Hill currently stands at 42. Participants include groups based in Arizona, uh, Arizona State University, Dartmouth College, Michigan State University, Rutgers University, Newark, University of Virginia, and Spelman College. Um the primary challengers are essential to ensure. So this is a, a spokesperson for the progressive says primary challengers are essential to ensure that the Democratic Party is continually held accountable to the needs of our constituents. This blacklist policy is undemocratic and antithetical to our values of inclusion and diversity, said the Harvard Democrats in a letter Wednesday. Challengers. Challengers to incumbents have been essential challenge challengers to incumbents have been essential to making the democratic party an institution that truly reflects the progressive values and diverse identities of the people it claims to represent. So, uh, I don't know. I think, I think Joe Biden can win them over. <laughs> well, what do you guys, what is my what does our panel think about this you know the movement started at harvard i guess they miss they missed a few alumni uh pete Buttigieg. did they miss his Buttigieg's mm. his speech on how bernie can't win boy this that guy's inspiring i guess the harvard <laughs> people didn't know pete Buttigieg's already told us that he bernie can't win so i don't know what the fuck it's so it's so inspiring to see a naval intelligence officer that was handpicked by a consulting mm. firm that hasn't even picked poor pick uh 
fixed poor neighborhoods in the town he's been a mayor at for five years say that Bernie's unelectable. It's really fantastic <laughs> to watch. It's really exciting. Well, how many Comcast fundraisers do Democrats have to have before they start attracting millennials? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why millennials are just too busy eating avocado toast to get to Comcast. You know what I mean? I think that's the problem. <laughs> or the crushing student loan debt. Or uh, Anyway. I can't believe the Dems aren't appealing to the college kids. Don't they know about Amy Klobuchar's? She has a new program to uh, for free office supplies for all millennials. <laughs> <laughs> this Sold. Is, that's a true thing. <laughs> so uh, there's a little bit more to this. Uh, let me read it to you. And as Democrats in the House combat Republicans' attacks on Americans' health care take on special interests in Washington, and fight for an economy that works for everyday Americans, we are already well into our work to fortify this newly won House majority and take the fight even deeper to the ruby red districts. So this was a spokesperson for the corporate Democrats saying that, look at all this stuff we're doing. Look at all this stuff. So let's look at what they're doing. They said that the... Uh, they are combating Republicans' attacks on Americans' health care. Oh, you mean by proposing Medicare for all? No, but, but by defending the Republican health care plan that was thought up of by Republicans. That's how you're doing it? Okay. The, uh, they're also to, to have a take on special interests in Washington. They're taking on special interests in Washington? Taking checks from them, yes. Yeah. What the <laughs> F? <laughs> That this is this is what they're really saying with a straight face, uh, and they're fighting for an economy that works for everyday America. Again, what? nothing. You're fighting for an economy that works for everyday Americans by fast tracking Trump's judges and helping them deregulate Wall Street again, which is what the Democrats did. Really, how are you fighting for it? Uh, and and we we are well, already well into our work to fortify this new one house majority for what? What's the point of having a House majority if Nancy Pelosi is not for anything that'll help us? What is the point of having Democrats be the majority of the House if Nancy Pelosi is for more war, is against Ilhan Omar, won't tell the truth about the people who actually do control our government with his corporations and Israel? What is the point of having a Democratic House? What is the fucking point? As, as, I'll, I'll tell of my panel. Or our panel. Potential for momentum. Oh, they There's... have potential for momentum. Oh, this I mean, this is the kind of bold incremental centrism platitudes that just make me so excited about the Democratic Party. I just I can't wait to hear more of it. It's so it's so great because, you know, for me as a guy that lost his house and is living in a one bedroom rent controlled apartment, I don't need policies that can help me actually have my own health care because right now I have to pay for it. I want platitudes. <laughs> yes. That's really going to make it. It's really going to help. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to help. It. You know, I don't subscribe to the political vigil Lanny on YouTube, just send me platitudes because that I can give to my landlord. I can pay my right. rent with platitudes. It's and you great. sleep a lot better. When I have just a blanket full of platitudes, mm. it's fantastic. I it's mean, the, Dem the Democrats are losing the young Democrats at Harvard. And now how many lunch tables does Beto O'Rourke have to jump on to win these kids back? Man, <laughs> when the children of billionaires don't even want to support the, the billionaire class, it's amazing to me. I mean, I mean, I know they're not the problem because Joe Biden told me that. So uh, I'm good. So here's the last part of this article from The Hill. It says, Representative Matt Goetz, a Republican from Florida, one of President Trump's most vocal supporters in Congress, echoed their critique, tweeting, General elections determine whether your party gets power. Primaries determine what you'll use it for. That's a Republican speaking way more truth yes. than the Democrats. That's a Republican speaking. Wait, and now do you understand why the biggest voting block in America are people who don't vote? And then the next biggest vote about voting block are independents. And then after that, it's Democrats and Republicans, which they each have about 26, 7 percent of the voting people. That's not a lot. That's not even a plurality. That's not certainly not a majority. Well, that's why this is so noteworthy, too. I mean, this isn't a progressive, you know, a group of like I mean, it's not just called a progressive group or it's not the DSA. These are the actual college Democrats. College Democrats. And, you know, when I, you know, I, I toured a lot of colleges in 2016, I saw the same thing Judah Friedlander and a lot of other comedians saw. Mostly excitement for Bernie, a little bit of excitement for Jill Stein, a little bit of excitement for Trump. No excitement for Hillary Clinton, which, which it is indicated, indicating that young people are fleeing the Democratic Party in droves, which, you know, poll after poll shows that to be the truth. These are the college students who are still willing to be on the team. And even they're saying this is bullshit. <laughs> yes. And this is also the this is the generation that. We were the last, Gen Xers, we were the last generation to, like, 
have a home phone, watch TV at a regular time at eight. You know, the show news is prime, on at eight o'clock. Prime time. Prime time. We were the last generation with that. So these these, especially college age, the young millennials or whatever they're called, they have been they have been on the internet since they were seven. They mm. get their news on shows like this. So when when like you know Kamala Harris says I used to smoke weed and listen to Tupac, <laughs> and it's like no, you didn't. The internet goes you lied. So all these kids get that in real time. They all follow AOC and they all see the bullshit. They watch their parents' homes get foreclosed on and lose their 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 uh, their you know retirement plans. They've been at war. Ron their is entire a, life. their entire life. Ron is an older millennial, and we've been at war half of Ron's life. Ron half is a life. senior millennial. He is a senior. <laughs> he is with the AARP for millennials, where he gets avocado toast on a walker. I get a slight <laughs> discount on macaroni and cheese at yes. some eateries. When you ride Quite those, the life. when you ride those scooters, you get an, an older millennial discount. That's right. Um, he gets three wheels on his scooter. <laughs> But that's the thing. They've grown up seeing this nonsense. They, they, they're they like, we're out. That's why. The, another thing the Democrats are terrified about, these younger college-age kids, they are the highest percentage of people openly calling themselves socialist. Yes. They are the group joining the DSA across the country. Yes. Opening new chapters. And they are the ones, as Ron said, even the ones who still believe in the Democratic Party are saying, nope. So Hillary Clinton gave an interview, which we covered uh, a couple months ago, and in it, she, she was, they were talking about the Iowa caucus, and she was saying, you know, when I did it, uh, when I was in the Iowa caucus, uh, something like 40% of the caucus goers uh, considered themselves socialists. So that's what I was up against. Like, instead of like, wow, maybe I should look into this and there's a new trend in America and what am I missing? It's like, these fucking, grr, I got to fight <laughs> half these assholes before I can even. So they don't even get that there's a problem. Of course not. Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. They don't give a shit. Can you being, if, Imagine if you had $2 million, how much out of touch you would fucking be. <laughs> now imagine having 200 of those. That's how out of touch they are. They'll never be able to spend the money they have. They have a, they have their own hospitals. Built, they had their own hospital built in Chelsea's freaking uh, condo. Remember that? Uh, so anyway, um, there you go. Great, great point by Ron that these are the these are the college kids willing to still call themselves Democrats, and they're not on board with this shit. Wow. All right, so everybody check out Graham on Political Vigilante, right? You got that Political Vigilante show on YouTube. Yep, youtube.com slash Graham Elwood. All you got to do is hit subscribe and like, and uh, that's a free way to support independent progressive journalism. Now, you do live? Do you do live shows, Graham? Every Sunday, I do live stream Sunday, 3 p.m., uh, Super Chat Sundays, I call them, and I usually end with uh, singing a song. So it's a multi-platform entertainment. Last last <laughs> Sunday I sang a song, War, What Is It Good For? And I started crying in the middle of it because I don't like war. So you uh, never know what's going to happen. So it's kind of dramatic. War is good for making Graham cry. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely Wait, nothing. nothing. Say it again. Uh, ha! Uh, whoa! Uh, good God! Ha! That is a good song to cry to. It's amazing. The lyrics in it are so profound. When you get into the the later verses, it's like... Oh, really? It, oh, it's, it's, I only know that verse. Yeah, he says it's only for the Undertaker, and he starts talking about it destroys young men and how it just—it's unreal. It's a—it's a lyrics, and here's the other thing: uh, mainstream artists aren't writing songs like that. That was one of the—that yeah. was a top ten song when it came out. Because yeah. you know what? The corporate media also controls entertainment. Yes. So you can talk about dancing and falling in love and bing, bang, boom, whatever. But you better not. If the, someone did a modern version of that, if Bruno Mars tried to do that, that would be scrapped. You mean you didn't hear Taylor Swift's Afghanistan song? Yeah. So Yemen, huh? Why Ooh. are we there <laughs> murdering children? My dog, my truck, domestic beer, no interventionism. Yeah. That's... <laughs> Not a song. <laughs> no, it's not. Ooh. But uh, catchy. In fact, during the Iraq War, Graham, I was a, a headlining national comedian. And uh, I remember that's when uh, I was right after they passed the 1996 Telecommunications Act. So that was like maybe six, seven years later. And so now all the radio stations used to be you drive around to different radio stations in, in the city that you were doing stand up in. And you'd have to drive to many radio stations who would have you. Right. Well, that all kind of stopped, and then you would just drive to one building, 
and they'd have all the radio stations. And you maybe maybe drive to two, so you drive to maybe uh, there would be what, what are the big ones? There's the Bob and Tom. No, no, no. I'm talking about the the, the there was CBS Radio, oh, CBS C- Clear Channel, Clear Channel, Channel. Yeah. became Bain Capital. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and that Infinity, was much I it. think, was Infinity. Yeah. So there was just three companies. So you would go to maybe two buildings, and they had all like the top floor is the country, uh, second floor is all the sports, uh, third floor is we have rock and rap, and then you're going to go to the news and over the rock station. And then I'm like, what the? You would just walk around a building. You just walk around a building, and then and in the middle was all these cubicles of all these people who would work. And so anyway, the point the point of this isn't how horrible it is to work for a corporate radio station, which it is. Uh, but the point of this is that I was given instructions. They go, okay, now it was when when they were trying to get rid of Howard Stern because mm-hmm. he had turned against the war, and so they start, he started to talk. They started to get him on uh, indecency stuff, and he was playing. He would he would play Oprah saying things that were way more indecent than he right. was saying. And I'm like, why does Oprah get to say this? Why does she get to say penis and going going in and out of things? And why does she get to say? And so. I would go to these to go to promote my stand-up shows. I would go to this radio center and I would be met by someone. I'd be there with someone a representative from this comedy club and then someone from the radio station would meet us and they would say, okay, here's what you can't talk about. They go, you can't talk about the war and you can't talk about Howard Stern. And I go, Howard Stern, but this isn't infinity. This is clear, or whatever it was, whatever it was. And he goes, doesn't matter. We're not talking about it and we're not talking about the war. I'm like, well, that's all I want to fucking talk about. That's what makes me. That's my edge. We 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 talk about, got you know, going to the baseball game or going to Disney. That that is what they wanted me to talk about. Yeah. So that is, you are correct. You'll never hear a song like that again. That is exactly. People have no idea that you that how they control our culture. Like you'll never you'll never get an anti war song that's popular anymore because corporations control our culture. No. There aren't independent radio stations. They don't exist. There's no there's no movies coming out that have any sort of talking about Yemen or socialism or anything like that. Or We're, Libya. Or, or Libya. what we did in Iraq for real. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nobody's talking about that. There's 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 movies that dance around it, but they're not really getting into it. I mean, we were there's talking... There's the White Helmets, the White Helmets, which is complete fucking propaganda right. bullshit. Right. Complete bullshit propaganda from the establishment. Of course, that's the movie that you get to see. Of course, that's the one they let you see and that wins the award. Well, not the one that tells the truth about the White Helmets being fucking tools of the military-industrial complex. Go well, what won the Academy Award for Best Documentary like a year or two ago? Invictus, the one about the doping scandal through the Russians that show the Russians as yes, the bad guy. But yeah, oh boom, 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 bad. Cover up, cover up, cover up. It's always I'm I'm watching, I'm driving around, and all I see, I'm like, I feel like I'm a kid in the '80s again. There's a new HBO show about Chernobyl. It's all about uh, why is an HBO okay Chernobyl? They covered the government covered up. Of course they did. Is there a Love Canal one? Is there a Three Mile Island thing from Chernobyl? They're, yeah. they're doing on HBO. Where's their Flint, Michigan? No, they don't. They don't seem to have a Flint, mm. Michigan one. Mm. I had to. And I interviewed Jordan Sheridan. He's the only guy covering it. Yep. He's the and last night we were we were talking about this at the comedy show last night. Great crowd. It was awesome. And I was like, no one else is talking. The best, the comedy store and the big clubs packed. And there's great comics that we all know that are really amazing comedians and joke writers. But you know what they're not talking about? They're not talking about the way you, the, your jokes about how Obama blew up the Middle East and, and killed Muslims. Or Steph's uh, jokes, uh, impressions, making fun of, of Liz Warren and, and Kamala Harris. No, no, There's nobody doing that in L. There's nobody doing that material that we're doing. We're the only ones allowed to do it. And we have to do it at the Sycamore Tavern, and we have to do it on YouTube because we are not going to get hired by Comedy Central. No, those, those days are over. Yeah, it's <laughs> over. It's over. And by the way, it's okay, because I don't know if you've seen Comedy Central lately. It's fine. The, the Daily Show is a shadow of its former self. Well, Aaron Matei brought it up. Look, we've all had these epiphanies of like, and I had mine like two years or so when you told me to start doing my own channel. I was like, I'm done. And and then I had it six months into doing Political Vigilante when I got fired. From, I a, got, from a show business from, job. From a show business job. Because? Because of my Twitter feed. Oh, my God. Because your progressive Twitter feed. Making fun of, of centrist uh, California state Democrats that just voted down. It was Anthony Rendon who had just killed single-payer health care in the state of California. I got fired for that and I had to sit there and make a decision because I was only six months into doing Vigilante it wasn't really making me much money I was like do I want to keep doing this because if I do show business ain't going to hire me anymore and I said fuck that 
I'm doing this. I had the epiphany you had with Joe Rogan. I had the one that Aaron Mate had. And I just went, I'm in. Don't hire me anymore. I'm done. And I'm going to say whatever I want, whenever I want. And it is the most beautiful, freeing thing as an artist. Next live Jimmy Dore show is June 5th. That's a Wednesday at Hermosa Beach Comedy Club in Hermosa Beach, California. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a link for all tickets where it might be coming to your town. And if you love the show, please become a patron. Please support the show. We give you hours of bonus material every week. And please click that bell to make sure you're subscribed. Even if you think you are already subscribed, they unsubscribe people every day. Just check. Thanks for your support.